Okay, just making a quick video of how I keep my tarantulas. And I'm not speaking of in the sense of aquariums or terrariums or Rubbermaids. I pretty much keep all my tarantulas in Rubbermaids. I do have one that I keep in an aquarium, an old aquarium. But what I'm speaking of is how I heat my tarantulas. There's a lot of debate on the internet of how you should do it. And there's actually some people that say, hey, I keep mine at room temperature. I feel like if I'm comfortable, they'll be okay and they'll be comfortable. They ain't died yet. And that's true. They're, they're not lying. They won't necessarily die. But I've kind of tested the theory. I've tried different type of heating sources. And what I've learned is with all my tarantulas, and I have 26 of them, every time I've used a heat source, I don't care if it was a ceramic light, I don't care if it was a space heater, whatever the case may be, if you put it anywhere near the rubber major of the cages, every single one of my spiders from a Chilean rose all the way to the tea burgundy will get on the side of the plastic and they will actually get near the heat source. And, and that's with my house stand at, say, 74, 76 degrees. So they still like that heat. So I got this idea to make a heat cabinet from Paul Becker, which this is the cabinet right here. And I'll show you the inside of it. Now, Paul Becker, he just recommends get an old cheap, um, like where you put books in, you know, a simple bookshelf, and then put a front on. Well, I, I just kind of used the same idea, but I went out and bought me a piece of furniture. It's a used piece of furniture. I think I paid 60 bucks for the furniture. It's real wood, uh, real thick and very heavy. Um, and I just done pretty much with his idea. I'll show you the inside here. I insulated the box just like he recommends with the um, bookshelves. I insulated the box, made it all airtight. When these doors actually shut, the insulation actually fits into the grooves and it literally seals everything. So it's pretty much almost airtight uh, and it holds the heat great. I check it with this little gauge here, plus I use two different gauges down at the bottom. I just got a heat pad put on a piece of glass, and I used, I bought some Velcro and kind of stuck it to that. And I just made a little temporary shelf out of some equipment I had, or out of some wood and screen that I had out in the to thing. I also use these two little humidifier and uh, thermometer. Not that I'm really checking the humidity in here, because they're going to have their own cocoa fiber and stuff like that in their individual rubber maids but I just had it in one of my aquariums so I went and stuck it beside the thermometer as well um, so basically I'm, I'm pretty much going overboard you probably don't need all these different thermometers and gauges but I just want to know the temperature all around the whole box but because it's closed in it pretty much reads the exact same temperature on each one but I love my tarantula so I just kind of go overboard when it comes to that so this will be where they're at in a few seconds. I'm going to add them all here and let you kind of see what it looks like. I use this drawer here that comes with this piece of furniture to keep different supplies, extra tanks when I need them and when I add more tarantulas. The bottom drawer, same thing. Just extra supplies. I actually use that old pan, that old baking sheet. I'll put my cocoa fiber on it and actually put it in the oven and bake it to just kind of dry the, the water out of it. Because some of my tarantulas, I've noticed, they hate standing on that wet cocoa. And I just kind of keep some of the cocoa fiber wet instead of all of it in their cage. But anyway, that's all for this part. I'll record it in a minute and show you what it looks like with my tarantulas in it. Okay, now I'm going to give you a quick view of my heating cabinet with the spiders added. I believe there's 26 in there. It could be 27, but I think it's 26 tarantulas total. As you can see, several of them are babies. The other ones are about 5, 6 inches. Of course, that one in the aquarium is my tea burgundy. She's actually 7.5 inches. And yes, the temperature reads 66. That's because I had it out while I was storing everything. I got my air conditioner on. That's why I read that. The heating cabinet itself gets all the way up to about 84 degrees, and I control it around 82, 84 for each one of them. Another reason why you need to have a heating cabinet in your house so that you can still be comfortable and have the air conditioner as low as you want it, and they can be comfortable up in the 82 and 84 range. And actually, no matter what anybody says, that's what they like. The areas they're from are not cold areas. Can they survive without it? Absolutely. 
but like I said in the beginning, I've tested this theory with heating sources beside them and every single one of them climbed on the side of their Rubbermaids and the aquariums to try to get as close as they could to the heating source. If they didn't like it, they wouldn't all do that. Alright, that's it for this part. Now I'm going to close it up so this air condition doesn't aggravate them and they can have the heat that they need. And I know you might say, well, yeah, but you can't really see your tarantulas. Well, I don't personally sit and stare at them all day long, so when it comes time to want to see them and feed them, I simply open the cabinet up, take it out, shut the air conditioning off while I feed them. Then I put them back up after I'm done playing with them, so to speak. They're comfortable, they're healthy, and they're a nice, cozy environment. All right, you tubians, have a good day.